I started my collection when I was a teenager, actually. Um, I like to dress up. When I go out shopping, the first place I go to is earrings. I love earrings because they can make a outfit pop right at the very end. If I go out and I forget my earrings, no matter where I am, I turn around and I go back home to get my earrings. It just feels odd to not have my earrings in. I have one particular pair of earrings which was passed down from my mum. My mum died in 2012, so they're very special to me. I like to wear my mum's earrings because when I get dressed, it does make me feel closer to my mum, but it also brings back memories of when my sister and I, we used to get dressed to go out partying. That was one of the things that my mother really enjoyed watching us do. So it brings all of that back, which is always a happy memory, so yeah. My collection is a, a set of items, medals, lots of different things, anything that I find interesting from uh, World War I, World War II, right up to more modern day things. If you have like an, a medal or a helmet or something from that era, and you can say someone wore this when they were going into battle, someone received this for doing this, it's a, it, it makes it a lot more real. I definitely like the ones where I can find out more about the specifics because if there's an, a name associated it to it or a date or a place, then I can really dig deep and find out what happened, what they did, where different things happened, and then I can really start to piece together a story. And I always find that really interesting. Half the fun is having it, but half the fun is telling those stories that you have as well of the each of the items and where they've come from. Someone I knew personally that fought in the war was my great-grandfather, and so there's a very personal connection to it as well. The collection um, is my dad's collection. Um, I found them when we were clearing out his house about 13 years ago, um, and it's matchbooks from all over, um, really 70s, um, 60s and they're really cool um, lovely designs on them from all over um, but they've been kept in a box away so now's the time to show them off um, my dad was really family man um, simple things really gardening uh, cooking um, so it's really different to how I imagine him but I'm guessing uh, he was a bit younger, so maybe he did do this, you know, travelling around collecting all these different matchbooks. It would be nice to think he did. Dad's no longer here, but it's really nice that I've got this collection. I've got very few things uh, of his, so it's really nice um, that I've got them. Um, and now that I've found them and now that they're out for this, I think I'm going to put them on display somewhere in the house, which would be a really nice fit and tribute, I think. I've been here for 26 years now. When I came here, my son was two years old and my daughter was six years old. And now uh, my son is 28 and he got a seven-year-old daughter and my daughter is 32 and she got two, two boys, which is two years old and five years old. So I've been here. We live in the same place, the same area, and I love where I, you know, where I live. Some of those items that I have are from my family, and some of those I bought it as a collections. When I, especially when I uh, go on holiday in the, in my country, and we try to go different places, so we pick one thing and uh, you know bring it back. When you see those things, the ornaments, you see them, you see them in the family, and you know bring it to back here. Especially it's a long way, so yeah, it helps me. It helps me to. I uh, have connections to my family, even at long distance. My collection is uh, a collection of old Nintendo games. I started about 10 years ago. I was very fortunate and saw a boxed Super Nintendo in a, a charity shop for, uh, quite cheap. And I jumped on it because it brought back all the memories um, of when I was a kid. The thing I like about Nintendo is that it was there when I was a kid. It was just the characters of it, um, 
that were really relatable. All the, the graphics were bright and colorful. My friend Dan, who also collects, um, we, we talk about games and play, play them together. And we have other friends as well where we try and meet up and play games and have a laugh. <laughs> My childhood self uh, would go crazy if they saw this collection now. Uh, yeah, they, I think that, uh, he would be just going mad <laughs> with, with joy. <laughs> My country, we very kind, Dif different culture, you know. We help each other. We got some like different costume. In Thailand, when uh, like uh, we have the party or something like that, yeah, over there they always have different culture, different party every month. Yeah, every month. Yeah, because we use the moon as well. Yeah, dark moon, full moon, and a uh, full moon. Uh, something like that. We have big like uh, we got to get dressed, night dress. Yeah, go out go to the temple together, like, yeah, like that. My Thai collection make I feel like close to my family and my heart is with my um, culture. My name is Elizabeth Quick, but bee for short, because I'm a beekeeper. I've been keeping bees for about 20 years now. It's a wonderful... Um, hobby I don't know if you call it that really it's more like a life <laughs> because every day you go and say hello to the bees and make sure that they're flying well etc they've been wonderful bees very friendly and um, they have given me um, 30 pounds of honey this year so it is good good going I'd like people to learn that they are essential to our um, to our um, survival because um, without them to pollinate our crops and our fruits. We cannot have food. And if you get bitten by the bug, <laughs> then you'll, um, you know, you, it's something you can enjoy for the rest of your life, really. Mm. Every time I was out and about as a youngster, um, I used to collect a bag or go into shops and ask for their bags. I started the collection because I'm a, from a family of collectors. Um, so I think I was probably feeling a bit left out that everyone else was collecting things and I wasn't. And it really hit me when I got the collection out again of what a snapshot it was of the high street as it was um, back in the 70s, 80s. And a lot of those shops that I have the bags for don't exist anymore. I have a fond memory of a fashion shop called Chelsea Girl, which was one of the shops where as I got older, I'd start to buy my own clothes. Um, so that, that brought back a fond memory as I was looking through the bags. I feel a bit nostalgic that the high street's changed, but change is good, things move on. So it's, it's interesting that I've got the collection so I can, it, it sparked quite a few memories for me. I always wanted to own a cottage, but realized that to own a cottage would be too much money for me and a lot of money would need it for the upkeep. So when I went to visit, I think it was Selworthy in Somerset, which is a national trust place, I believe, I saw these beautiful cottages and I'm sure it was when I was in the tea room, I saw on display the Lilliput Lane cottage. So that was the idea of buying, starting the collection really. I just want people to know that these houses are around and they represent our country where, we, where we've grown up in and sadly a lot of these ca um, cottages and old houses are pulled down because they become derelict or uh, they become too expensive to renovate. Although the, the cottages you only see outside, I imagine what it's like to live inside with a lovely fire, uh, an old fashioned grill, cooking um, and just being surrounded by love in all things. Most of my life I've been interested in mysterious things and over the years I've managed to collect a lot of things like tarot cards. I think people are scared of these things because quite often they turn up in horror films whereas actually in an, an average tarot pack of 78 cards you've got all sorts of joyful things and success and happiness 
but it's always the, the, the darker, more mysterious ones that people focus on. My late partner was a recording engineer. In fact, he built a lot of the major studios in the recording business. There are quite a lot of people who are interested in mysticism and magic and so on. And in his work, he met people and collected these cards. Some of them gave them to him as presents. So after he died in the year 2000, I ended up with quite a lot of his collection. And you know, now seemed to be a good time to share them, perhaps, with other people. He was you know, a person of great... Yeah, it was a great love of my life, really, and uh, it would be a shame to forget him. The collection of stuff I brought today is a collection of items from my time at Bemis Strand Boys Club, which had a huge impact on me as a, a young person through the way they operated and uh, gave me a set of values and principles that are dear to me and I operate to now. I've collected stuff relating to this organisation since I was about... 15 or 16, I became a member when I was 13. I just held on to it and then built that collection up over a period of time. For me, I wanted to collect it to make sure there was always a history of something that I was interested in. Because even now, people on this estate have gotten the, the actual organisation even existed. My favourite item has to be the mouth organ. And the mouth organ was played by Steve Long. And that individual had a huge influence on my life and the lives of many of others. That went through the club and each of the artifacts as such has a emotional contact in, in my life so that's why I collect them. My collection is a massive amount of things that I have gathered from the Glastonbury festivals I have attended over the last 41 years. I have always been a little bit of a hoarder so I've always kept tickets, programmes, wristbands and so forth. So I think it just naturally happened that by not throwing things away, I gathered a lot of stuff. I think the wristbands probably tell the biggest story and, and are probably one of my favourite items. It's nice to look back on these things, you know, it's nice to remember. My father helped to build the pyramid stage in 1980 and I have been on site ever since because I've got so many connections and friends and family that I know there um, because it's a magical place and because no other festival in the UK really comes close to what you can find at Glastonbury. My collection is um, celery vases. They are glass that used to be put on the table at tea time during Victorian times and following on right through until about the 30s, I would say, 40s it had to be because I was young then. And I used to visit my auntie in Bedminster. We used to catch the bus over and the bus used to stop at the bus station at the end of uh, West Street. We used to get off there. I used to run like anything up to Cromwell Street couldn't wait to get there you know I loved to go in there we used to sort of go in and stay a bit in fact I was actually born in that house it's not there anymore and tea times we always had a celery vase on the table and uh, various sticks of celery in it and I was I thought oh I taste that you know that was it reminded me of sort of visiting where I used to love to go actually I'm a runner, at least I call myself a runner. Um, the collection that I've got is the memorabilia of my runs and what was really good about a certain run. So whenever I go into that collection, then those memories are there and um, they inspire me to carry on and do better and greater things each year. I love running. I love getting off-road running. Um, I'm ridiculously long off-road runs as well, but I also find when I get out in the fields and I'm running, it reminds me of when I was a kid. The part of my collection that I'm most proud of is a Green Man medal. That's 46 miles off road that I did in 10 hours um, when I was 65. I pick a bigger challenge each year to push me on and hopefully that inspires other people as well and makes other people realise I started to run when I was gone 60, well overweight, they can do it. I've done the three peaks when I'm 70, so others can do it. Don't tell yourself you can't do something because if you tell yourself that all the time, you're not going to do anything.